right, welcome to Screen Time with today's Communique. So honored to have Dr. Veronica Perkins joining us today to discuss all things motherhood for Mother's Day. As we know, we celebrate Mother's Day during the month of May. And so we want to gear our conversation today about motherhood. Before we jump into our conversation though, I do want to give a special thank you and shout out to our series sponsor, Latanya Austin Honorable. For all your legal, social, and community needs, make the honorable choice. So Dr. Perkins, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you. I, uh, I'm honored to be uh, invited. I don't think that there's a, a higher honor that a person could um, receive than to be asked to talk about all things motherhood. Absolutely, absolutely. So before we talk motherhood, tell us a little bit about you, um, your career path, and then we'll jump into talking about motherhood. Okay, well, I'm Veronica Roberts uh, Perkins, a proud mother of four uh, and a career educator. I've spent the last 27 years or so uh, in the field of uh, education, K-12 education. Uh, got to see the uh, educational field from a variety of, of vantage points, uh, principal, chief academic officer, currently serve as a deputy superintendent for a school district in, the, in eastern Arkansas, which is close to my home, uh, so close to my heart, uh, being able to be in the Delta, uh, trying to make a difference for um, the students there. So spent a great deal of time in and around school, near school, by school, going to school, something I'm doing with school, just have had a, a heart for teaching and learning. Uh, so spent 27 years doing that. Absolutely. And kudos to you and all the teachers out there. It's, um, you definitely have to have a passion for it um, in order to go into that field. My mother um, is a middle school counselor and served for many, many years as a teacher. So I understand that um, for those of you who go into education, you have to really want it and it has to be a passion. And so thank you, thank you, thank you for all the work that you um, are doing and continuing to do on behalf of children. And so Absolutely. speaking of children, your mom. So think back to the time when you first learned that you were expecting and you were going to be a mom. Um, share with us a little bit about that feeling. <sighs> so that's almost 27 years ago. My oldest daughter, who I hope to, uh, joins us for a little bit, um, 27 years ago, I was in awe. I mean, you had this gamut of emotions. So you're excited but you're apprehensive, there's some anxiety because you're thinking, I'm gonna be a mom, you know? I'm not sure that I know exactly what that's supposed to look like. Um, so you have these, um, this gamut of emotions, right? But then it kind of settles in and you have this sense of awe that there is a life that's growing inside of you. Uh, and so uh, you experience all of that all through the, the nine month period of time, but Absolutely, a lot of excitement around the opportunity to, to have another uh, person come into this world through, through me, uh, me being a vessel for that. So excited, um, all those things. So, so you've been a mom for at least 27 years now. And so uh, what would you say is your favorite part of being a mom? I think my favorite part of being a mom is, is watching them to grow and come into their own. Um, you invest a lot uh, as, a, as a parent, you're constantly pouring out, right? And so when you start to see this return on that investment, when you start to see them uh, listening to some of the things you're thinking, you've been a voice in that ear, but you don't know if they're really getting it. And then there's some things that are indicators that, yeah, they are listening, they are getting it. Uh, seeing them come into their own, there's no, I don't, that's my favorite part of being a mom. Uh, my other part is, is being there to support them, uh, them coming and reaching out to me, knowing we've had some difficult conversations around a multitude of things that young people face, especially in this current generation. So uh, having them reach out to me as a source uh, always is a favorite part for me. Um, 
when you think about um, motherhood, the busyness of it, um, the kids and their activities um, with work and, and all of your activities, I know that there has been a time where you were like, okay, the kids are hungry, they're little, um, what, what can I feed them that's quick, that's easy? Um, what was your go-to meal when the kids were young that you could just kind of whip together? <laughs> to oh, I could get some chicken nuggets and some mac and cheese. They knew <laughs> if mom couldn't pull out anything else, she could get some mac and cheese, some chicken nuggets. And if all else failed, mom would stop at the pizza place and get a pizza. <laughs> And we were eating pizza in, in the in the car. Uh, you're right. We did. I mean, from soccer to uh, volleyball to band to choir, there was always some activity. Not to mention my own professional development and board meetings, all kinds of things. Uh, but I was really fortunate. My children, they just, oh, mom, yeah, just stop right there at McDonald's, get us something, and we can do it on the fly. Uh, so we learned to manage. Absolutely. <laughs> Learning to manage as a mom, I think that um, mothers are born with that ability to multitask because there's so many things going on and you you just have to get it done. And so yeah, uh, absolutely. you can't really read a manual for that. <laughs> there is no manual. That was going to be a point of mine. There is no manual. But there's the opportunity to have a support network, right? And that helped me greatly. Uh, I had older women that I could call and I could talk to. I had my own mother before she transitioned. So those pieces, I, I, I learned to reach out to other people who have been doing it and who have been successful uh, to get a little bit of support for myself. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you mentioned your mom. Um, you know, they, people say that once you get older and you become a parent, you find yourself, you've turned into your parent, it turned into your mom. Is there one thing that you find yourself doing or find yourself saying to the kids where you, you know, you think back and you say, you know what, I have truly turned into my mother. And if so, what is that one thing that you've done or said to the kids where you can just hear your mom like, yes, that was me. Yeah, I was thinking about that very question. And I remember when I was a small girl, my, we had a little switch tree out uh, in the yard and she would get that switch and she would tear those legs up. But when I had children, her grandchildren, she'd tell me, just love them through it. Just love them through it. And I, 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 didn't, I didn't understand what she meant, but as I've gotten older, that whole piece around being able to communicate well, and just to love them through it has become so much more uh, important to me and so much more of me saying, did I just say love them through it? Don't, don't do that other part. But that has really got me say, oh, that's my mother right there. Love them through it. Just love them through it. Absolutely. Love them through it. I love that. I love that. <laughs> so when you're thinking about um, motherhood, you're a career educator. Um, in what ways would you say that um, your mothering skills and uh, your role as a mom has uh, helped you in your job as an educator? Oh, yeah. So the whole piece that builds compassion in you, the whole piece that uh, works to help you find solutions and build bridges have certainly uh, transitioned into my work piece, right? And I've, I've taken that same thing around, love them through it when I'm working with teachers, when I'm working at admin, with administrators, when I'm working with students, right? So if we see ourselves as bridge builders, as trying to help find those solutions that people need, a lot of that really is grounded in my whole mothering piece, my wanting to help support, not to necessarily do for people, but to, to help support them so that they can become self-sufficient for themselves, right? And so a lot of those pieces have come strictly out of, of what has uh, nurtured in me as a mother. Yeah, yeah. And when you think about um, the term mother and Mother's Day and motherhood, we know that um, you're a foster mom. And we know that the month of May is uh, dedicated to celebrating uh, foster parents. And so what is it 
what within you um, made you decide to become a foster mother and how has being a mom to your own biological children helped you with that journey in becoming a foster parent? Yeah, so I knew that uh, as my children got older, I felt like, oh, I just got this information inside of me to really have this grasp on what I think it means to be a mom. And I really want to do it again. And I really want, there's so many children out there. I had a friend at church who um, was uh, a social worker who was uh, acquainted well with the foster system. And when we talked about how very many kids there are out there that need someone to help support them, sometimes to just be that bridge while uh, the bio mom is, is, is trying to, to make those transitions for herself. Uh, I thought this was just a little bit of a way that I could give back. Uh, and so I am the uh, proud foster mom of two uh, babies who are about 16 months old that have really brought a lot of joy and excitement uh, to my life and to my home and to my heart. Uh, and it just was a way for me, I, I think, to, to give back, to, to, to do something where I felt like I was really making an impact. And for these babies, I've, I've had them uh, since they were 11 weeks old and they're about 16 months now. It's just, it's been uh, a beautiful experience to do it. I almost feel like what, what they think, they, what they say our grandmother feels like, right? Uh, just, uh, just knowing that you're making a difference for some babies who, who really need you. Uh, so it's been a wonderful thing. And I'd say uh, kudos to all of those foster moms out there and foster dads as well, because there are a lot of families, uh, men and women who work and open their homes and their hearts and and they support these babies who really need them at a time um, that's really critical. Uh, so, and it's helped my family. It really has uh, taught us about being more selfless and, and giving and, and to, to give of yourself, not necessarily money or, or what have you, but, but to, re to meet a real need in someone's life. And so it's been a beautiful experience. Probably this is my third set. I've been uh, fostering for, for a little bit over two years now. Uh, but certainly has been a wonderful opportunity to really teach us something about uh, about love and about and not necessarily being blood that uh, makes you uh, family, but welcoming someone uh, into your heart, making that decision, a conscious choice to do that uh, has been a beautiful experience for my family. And kudos and congratulations. I mean, wow, <laughs> that's that's that can be a lot. Fostering um, children can be a lot. And so when you when you before you said yes, was there a moment where you thought, okay, I have grown children, um, I've raised my children, and now it's like I'm starting all over again? Did was there a pause somewhere in between? And then how did you how did you work through that? Well, yeah, and some of my friends were saying, what's wrong with you? You must be in the midlife piece or something is going on. So yeah, you do have a pause. Um, but the pull of, of that work was greater than what I felt in the pause, right? Mm -hmm. I felt like, yeah, I do have grown children, but I believe when you've uh, cultivated or when God has cultivated, you hadn't done it, God has cultivated this in, within you, right? that um, it was a, a gift that I feel like I wanted to share. And I, I didn't think that I was done, uh, that I felt like, okay, now I know how, I, I've got my career really solid. I made some sacrifices as a, as a young mother who was a, 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 a career educator. Uh, and so there was some things that I wanted a second chance at. Right. Uh, and they gave, they provided me that second chance. Um, so I created this work-life balance. At 5.15, I'm at the daycare to pick them up. Uh, at six o'clock, my email and phone is going off um, mm -hmm. because I want to be able to share with them. Uh, and so those are some things that I learned uh, in the course of raising my own children. But I said, okay, I got a second chance to do it now. Uh, and that's what I've been doing. Yes, wow. That is just phenomenal. It's phenomenal. <laughs> All righty, so now we are joined by Dr. Perkins' daughter, Carlantha. And so Dr. Perkins, introduce your daughter to us and tell us a little bit about her. Ah, this is my firstborn, Carlantha Michelle Roberts. 
uh, will be 27 here pretty soon. Uh, and probably uh, my first real introduction to motherhood. And uh, uh, she is a graduate of Loyola University uh, in New Orleans. Uh, currently, she is in uh, Alexandria, Virginia, uh, doing real estate uh, and uh, very active in her church ministry. Uh, uh, and so this is my oldest daughter, Calantha Michelle. I could just, you know, I can look at you, uh, Dr. Perkins, and just see the pride. It's just oozing from your pores. Um, and so, Carlantha, tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up with your mom. Um, I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> uh, one phrase that my mom always told us was that she would like everything that we ever wanted, she would almost provide everything that, that we wanted. So she, she provided everything that we needed and almost everything that we wanted. Mm -hmm. So there was never a time where we felt like we were in need or in want. My mom was always striving for more, even though we didn't always ask for more. We were just good with whatever my mom gave us. My mom's standard was always higher. She wanted to always strive to do more, to be educated, to, to just push your limits and, and to go beyond just the standards. So living with my mom, well, being raised by my mom, um, I'm really happy <laughs> that um, everything that she taught us actually got me to where I am today. So my education and how I am as, you know, a young adult female and how I, uh, you know, have just been raised. I, I really appreciate everything that my mom has, uh, has catered and sacrificed for because it's not easy uh, raising children, like mostly on your own. So um, I really commend my mom. She, I remember in fourth grade, uh, that's when she got her doctorate. So my mom never stopped going to school. And um, I remember getting off uh, school early and we would drive to Jonesboro and I would stay with my family and we'd, <laughs> we'd play with our cousins, but we never really knew why we were going. We just knew we're getting off school early and we're gonna go see our cousins in, jo in Jonesboro. But my mom was taking late, late classes. So she always, everything was for us. And, um, and now I have that heart of serving because my mom always served us completely. So um, thank you, mom. <laughs> and it, it, that is, yeah. I'm getting goosebumps. I'm, I'm getting beclamped. Just listen here, listening to you share the story because it, it makes me think about, you know, all the sacrifices that my mother made when we were kids um, growing up, you know, she, she got her master's degree um, at UCA. I think, I think she went to school when we were like in um, first, second grade and she carried us with her to class, just like your mother did with you. And uh, we had our little workbooks and you know we sat over in the corner and did our little work while she was in class. So I can definitely relate um, to the sense of pride that you have right now. Um, with your mother and all the sacrifices that she made. Indeed, I can definitely relate. So thank you for sharing that uh, with us. So, you know, a lot of times um, when we think about our mothers um, and everything that they go through, we don't think about um, the sacrifices that they make and how that impacts us directly until we get older and we can go back and reflect upon that. And so thank you for sharing that with us. And so with that said, is there, one um, bit of advice or, or something that your mom had, has always told you um, as you were growing up and you think that now, okay, I am doing, I'm becoming my mother as an adult. Um, <laughs> one thing that she said or did, one habit that she may have had that you find yourself doing now. Um, I think kind of relating to what I was speaking about before, just not believing in that glass ceiling. Mm. My mom now, not trying to show your age mom, but like close to retirement, but she's like, I wanna start a business. 
So my mom is my mom um, has never believed in in a glass ceiling. So even though I took some pivots and turns with my career and where I am now, I was supposed to be a doctor. I'm not I'm not a doctor, but my mom never ridiculed me. She never used negative words. My mom has always been. Um, since she's an educator, words are very important. She's always been very encouraging, positive. And I think through that positivity, it it transferred over into me. So I, I'm full of thankfulness. Yeah. And um, that, that's that's very different. Not, not everyone grows up that way. Not everyone can uh, have endurance or perseverance with a lot of the things that we go through through, through life and hardships. But um, my mom's standard of there not being a glass ceiling and always being positive, that has made me thankful to God and able to just keep going no matter what, um, what kind of hardship or persecution comes, comes my way. So um, that's what, I, that's what I, I keep with me all the time. Absolutely. I love that. And so, Dr. Perkins, when you hear your, your firstborn, your baby girl, um, speak about the impact um, that your hard work, your dedication um, has had on her. Um, how does that make you feel? Because, uh, you know, a lot of times we think that kids aren't necessarily paying attention to what we're doing, um, but they are. And so I can, I can tell um, by your daughter's comments that she, she was watching you and she was paying attention. And so how does that make you feel? I'm thankful. I have um, such a sense of thankfulness and uh, gratefulness for, um, you don't always get it right. I told you there is no parent manual, right? And so a lot of times you're just, you're, you're finding your way, uh, even as a mother. Uh, so when I hear her talk, you know, I, I'm thankful and I'm, I'm thankful of the scripture that says that they'll grow up and call you blessed. Uh, and for this, very, you know, for this reason, um, I, I'm so thankful that um, that they were paying attention, that they were taking to heart, uh, and that um, they they hid some of those nuggets away. Uh, that now I see the return on the investment, and I'm thankful. Absolutely. And so, Carlenta, when you were thinking about, you know, if you ever decide to become a parent yourself, what one, you know, one or two characteristics. Um, have you seen in your mother that you'd like to um, possess or reflect uh, once you decide to become a parent? Because surely I'm going to be a grandmother, surely someday. <laughs> someday. You're going to answer no. this question as if we're going to be I'm going to be a grandma. Okay, go on. <laughs> they call me Gigi. My name is Gigi. <laughs> you wait for me. Um. I, I, I think I want to just carry on my mom's heart. Another saying that my mom always uh, told us was anything for my babies. She even says it to, to that day. So my mom doesn't think about herself first. It's selflessness. And even, even if I do become a mother or if I don't become a mother, selflessness is something that we need. One, as a Christian, as a good person, um, to be good to others and to to make this world a, a, a better place when when you leave it. So um, I really want to carry on that sense of selflessness so that I can care about the people around me and my loved ones. Oh my gosh, I love that. I love that. Dr. Perkins, you did that. <laughs> I, it's just, yes. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. It's, it's just so beautiful to see um, the relationship. And like I said, we're, it's, it's motherhood. Um, there's so much that goes into bringing a child into the world, but so much more into raising a child. Uh, I think that's what motherhood is all about. And so thank you, Carlantha. Thank you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Perkins. Thank you for inviting thank you, Ms. me. Edding. So wonderful, yes. thank you. I'm so glad we were able to make this work. I am too. I'm, I'm super grateful. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, baby. And now Thank you, Mama. <laughs>